Welcome to Weekly Focus with me, Sushani Kluat on NBT World. Thai Raksa Shad Party, the political party in Thailand, has registered Princess Ubonrat Mehidon, the eldest child of His Majesty the late King Pumipon Adunyadet, as its only candidate for Prime Minister. The party made headlines this morning after proposing Princess Ubonrat as its Prime Ministerial candidate to the Election Commission in Bangkok. Thai Raksa Chat party leader said the proposal has been approved by the party's board and the princess. Executive board meeting. We have uh, discussed about the name, you know, complying with the law, and one of the member have proposed her name, and we all agree that this is the most appropriate name uh, to be in the PM candidate list for Thai Raksa Chat. We all agreed, you know, uh, and so I think that this is, uh, she will be the, the hope of this country. I, I think that we all come by the rules, okay? Everything we do is uh, complying with the law and constitution. So it all depends on the people of this country. You know, uh, there, there is no one have, you know, a privilege, you know, or exclusive rights or anything. Princess Ubonrat Rajakanya Siri Vatana Panawadi was born in 1951. The princess renounced her royal title after marrying an American in 1972. She returned to live in Thailand permanently after a divorce, and is known to many Thais as a leader of various social campaigns, including the campaign against illegal drugs. In the meantime, Prime Minister General Prayutan Ocha this morning accepted the Palang Prasarat Party, the party closely related to the military government's invitation to be its prime ministerial candidate in the upcoming election. On Thursday, other two prime ministerial candidates for the same party, Somkit Jatusi Pitak and Utama Sawanayon, withdrew their candidatures, leaving General Prayut the sole candidate for the party. The Thai court is considering the case of Bahraini soccer player Hakim Al Arabi, according to the extradition proceedings. In the meantime, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Thailand is trying to coordinate talks between Bahrain and Australia to reach a satisfactory agreement. Deputy Prime Minister Wisnut Kriangam said it should not be concluded yet that Thailand will send Mr. Hakim back to Bahrain. The Thai court will consider his case based on evidence such as arrest warrants issued by Bahraini authorities. The Thai Ministry of Foreign Affairs is trying to mediate talks between Bahrain and Australia, but the results of the talks are still to be waited and seen. Meanwhile, the ministry has confirmed that the Thai government does not know Mr. Hakim and it holds no bias against him. Thailand would not have been involved in this case if Australia did not warn it about the fugitive's red notice and Bahrain did not ask Thailand to arrest and extradite him. It took many days for the Australian government to inform Thailand of the cancellation of the red notice, but the case proceedings in Thailand had already started. The ministry reiterated that Thailand gets nothing from arrested, the fugitive, and confirmed it is ready to cooperate with all sides. Mr. Hakim was convicted of vandalism in Bahrain and sentenced to 10 years in prison in 2014. He fled and granted refugee status in Australia in 2017 and came for a honeymoon trip in Thailand. The next hearing in Thai court regarding his case is scheduled on April 22nd. In the past week, the air quality in the central region of Bangkok has improved to better levels, with the low concentration of particulate matter, or PM2.5. However, water spraying effort to reduce the haze continues. Many organizations have continued to join in the water spraying effort with the Royal Thai Air Force Public Disaster Center. Small airplanes have also been used to dispense water into the air in nearby province, such as Nakhon Patom despite PM2.5 readings now lower than the past few weeks. Meanwhile, cabinet ministers were told of short, medium and long-term plans laid out by the National Environment Committee to address the air pollution. Medium-term strategies include reducing PM2.5 emissions, eliminating PM2.5 origins and making, making all vehicles meet Euro 5 emission standards by 2021. Long-term strategies to be executed from 2022 to 2027, including uh, lower 
lowering the acceptable limits of exhaust emissions to Euro 6 standards, building towers to monitor air pollution, making burning in open air a criminal offense, and promoting ele electric vehicles. The cabinet then agreed to set up PM 2.5 monitoring and tackling centers at the provincial level tasked with the maintaining air quality in their respective areas. The haze situation across Thailand is expected to return to normal before May this year. Thailand's Deputy Prime Minister has urged the Ministry of Industry and related agencies to adjust their role of helping entrepreneurs, including modification of laws and regulations, focusing on startups. Deputy Prime Minister Somkhit Chatusi Pitak, the Deputy Prime Minister for Economic Affairs, has called on the Ministry of Industry of Thailand as an agency directly responsible for advancing the InnoSpace pro project, an incubator of startup Co cooperating with the private sector located in Rayong province in the east of Thailand to adjust its role to promote more startup entrepreneurs, including amending laws and ministerial regulations to keep pace with other countries within three months. Additionally, he emphasized the diversity in startup businesses in Thailand, including agricultural, healthcare, and value added services, which will help decrease the equality gap in the future. Mr. Somkit also called for detailed progress in the InnoSpace Thailand project, a platform which aims to promote the role of Thai startup entrepreneurs in accordance with Thailand's targeted industries such as deep technology and modern agriculture technology. Led by Ministry of Industry, the project joins with the private sector in Thailand and abroad such as Hong Kong Cyberport. In this, the first year of operation, the project expects 50 entrepreneurs to participate. Thailand has set an ambitious goal to be one of the top 20 startup nations in the world. By 2021, it has set the target of creating 3,000 innovation-driven enterprises and 50,000 jobs. The government also launched numerous incentives and plans to support startups in accordance with its Thailand 4.0 policy to change the country to be more innovation driven. According to the National Innovation Agency or NAA, as of May 2018, there were an estimated 1,700 startups registered and the actual figure could be higher. Though it has experienced uh, fast growth, the agency admits that few are successful in growing their value. The top five industries among Thai startups in Thailand are lifestyle, transportation, logistics and fintech, marketing technology, tourism and e-commerce. The NAA points out that a majority of investors in Thailand are venture capitalists. As of May 2018, there were around 120 venture capitalists in Thailand and 70 of them are corporate VCs. However, according to the Tech Investment 2018 report from Cento Ventures, the venture capital firm focused on technology startups in ASEAN, the digital investment activity of Thailand is only, only ranked fifth among all Southeast Asian nations, account, accounting for only 2% of all ASEAN's internet technology investment, a decrease from 7% of the previous year. The number one in ASEAN is Indonesia. As for Thailand in past couple of years, government has been supporting startup entrepreneurs by implementing various schemes such as smart visa program, the visa offered to foreign experts, executives, entrepreneurs and investors in 10 targeted industries. And the government also initiated various incubator and accelerator startup programs According to the NAA in 2017, the government agency actually provide most support to startups in their early stages. However, in a concluding report of Thai Startup 2018 by three startup related agencies, including the Thailand Tech Startup Association, it suggests four ways to develop startups in Thailand, including supporting high skilled Thai and foreign human resources through a smart visa program study regional and global startup ecosystems, the government giving more support to link large private companies and startups, and lastly, support of experts in specific areas to advise Thai startups. 
After a break, we see more of what happened across Thailand and ASEAN. Excuse me, what is Timar? T-Mark, the sign of excellence and heart-made quality from Thailand to the world. In the past week, the general public in Thailand celebrated the Chinese New Year festival with many people back to their hometowns to pay their respects to their ancestors. Many types of Chinese descent dressed in red and visited Bangkok Chinatown, Yawarat Road, local shopkeepers reportedly expect higher sales compared to last year. The festivities in Chinatown continued until Wednesday. Meanwhile, Airports of Thailand or AOT confirms that Thailand is still one of the world's top destinations for Chinese travelers during the Lunar New Year Festival. The Tourism Authority of Thailand in Chiang Mai Province expects that during the festival this year, Chinese tourists will generate an income of around 900 million baht. During this week, many tourists are traveling to Phuket, the popular beach destination in southern Thailand, the Tourism Authority of Thailand in Phuket expects an increase of 3% in hotel occupancy rates with around 11 billion baht of income generated. Thailand has declared 2019 the Year of ASEAN Culture to promote and disseminate ASEAN culture as a single community. Many cultural activities will be organized throughout 2019 both in Thailand and abroad. ASEAN member countries have their similarities and differences of culture with diversity, an aspect of their vivid cultures. Thailand, as the ASEAN chairman this year, has declared 2019 the year of ASEAN culture under the theme Diversity, Creativity and Sustainable. The 8th ASEAN Minister Responsible for Culture and Arts or AMCA meeting has approved cultural events during the ASEAN Culture Year 2019 in order to promote and disseminate ASEAN culture as a single community and raising the awareness of the global society under the concept ASEAN Oneness to the World. Last week at Government House in Bangkok, Prime Minister General Priyutan Ocha presided over an event to launch the ASEAN Culture Year 2019. Coinciding with Thailand, serving as the chair of ASEAN in 2019, eight performances were staged to show the cultural diversity of ASEAN at the event. The Prime Minister also took the opportunity to hand out copies of English version of Vivid ASEAN to ASEAN diplomats from nine countries, Brunei Darussalam, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, and Vietnam. During the ASEAN Cultural Year, many cultural activities will be organized in both Thailand and abroad to promote ASEAN cultural diversity and develop the ASEAN cultural heritage as a creative industry. The cultural proximity brings all ASEAN members closer together. Despite some differences, they share many similarities and have lived together with good understanding for many years. The ASEAN cultural diversity combined with ASEAN identities will help strengthen the ASEAN community. 
And that's all for our weekly focus today. Thank you for watching and goodbye.